Thank you so much for joining me for this video which is a look at white balance and fireworks. I have been busy out in the garden doing some filming and testing and have some very exciting results to share with you. Now white balance affects all of us when we film fireworks whether we realise it or not. Whether you're filming on a phone or a GoPro or a mirrorless camera you have two choices. You can either use auto white balance which most people do or you can lock it down to a specific setting. Now if you use auto white balance you're not going to ruin your footage but your camera has to guess how to colour the shots. It doesn't always get it right with fireworks so gold fireworks can come out looking silver, blue is a very hard colour to pick up and your camera will be distracted by any ambient lighting like street lights or floodlights that kind of thing. On the other hand if you want to set it to a specific value then what value should we use? Well I first looked at this way back in 2011. Consumer cameras back then were a lot crapper than they are now. I only used three different coloured fireworks, they were sparklers actually. I used gold, red and green. The conclusion from this was that daylight was a good setting to use as this preserved the warmth of the gold and didn't completely lose the red and the green. But is that still a good setting in 2022? I've always wondered with camera sensors getting better whether a different white balance setting would make fireworks look nicer and also the daylight setting is quite warm so it does make things look kind of golden all the way through. So what I've done with this test is I've popped out into the garden, let off eight different coloured flares and filmed each one of them at eight different white balance settings starting at 2,500 Kelvin going up in 1,000 Kelvin increments all the way up to 9,500. Now a huge thank you at this point to Warren at Trafalgar Fireworks in Norwich. I popped in to see Warren last week to see what colours he had in stock for this video and he was very kind enough to supply me with one of every colour so I've got eight colours to play with which will give much more comprehensive results. In fact eight flares at eight different settings will give us 64 different results to look at. Okay let's jump straight into the results. I'm going to refer to my notes here. I'm going to start with blue and what I'm going to do with each colour is to put the results in a strip along the bottom of the screen so you can see how the colour changes as the white balance setting is upped from 2,500 all the way up to 9,500. <clears throat> now straight away with blue you can see how white balance really does affect the colours. Blue looks really nice at 2,500 Kelvin but very quickly drops off. It's still there at 3,500 but from four and a half upwards it starts to fade. You can see that using a daylight setting around about five and a half thousand in this case you've got very little in the way of blue left and that would explain why using that setting on a general firework display you can see that there are blue fireworks there but they don't come out that well. So two and a half thousand is definitely a sweet spot for blue. Next up I want to take a look at white. You'll see from these results another colour in a firework that varies tremendously depending on the white balance setting. It's at its crispest at 2,500 Kelvin although maybe it's a little too white at that setting. At 3,500 probably the closest to real life. 4,500 it's beginning to look a bit golden and it warms up from there to the point where it almost doesn't look white at all. At 9,500 Kelvin for example it almost looks yellow. So again with white as with blue the lower setting here is definitely the better. Purple next, this is an absolutely beautiful colour in a firework if you can manage to get footage of it. Like blue it's a very difficult colour to capture and we can see why in these results. It's really only a very deep purple at 2,500 Kelvin. At 3,500 it still looks nice although it's looking more pink and then from that point onwards it warms up quite significantly. By the time we get up to for argument's sake 8,500 Kelvin it's starting to look almost like a pale pink. So the sweet spot for me again for this one I'm going to say two and a half thousand or three and a half thousand Kelvin. Next we move on to pink and red, two very similar colours. Let's start with red as it's a very very common firework colour. I haven't really seen any firework footage ever with red fireworks in where the red hasn't come out. It's such an easy colour to pick up on any kind of camera. You can see the results in the white balance settings here. It looks red at any settings, maybe a bit dull at two and a half thousand but three and a half, four and a half it looks rich and then as we go up from there it just gets progressively warmer. 
Moving on to pink, very similar to red. There are so many different shades of pinks in fireworks. So this is just one example. This was a very much just red, but a lighter color. At two and a half thousand though, it's quite interesting because there's not a lot of pink in it. We need to jump up to three and a half thousand to see it looking pinkish. And then from there, along with the red, it just starts to get progressively warmer. I think again, the sweet spot for both pink and red for me, three and a half thousand, maybe four and a half thousand. Next, we come on to orange. This was a bit of a surprising result. I would have thought higher temperatures would look really rich and orangey. In actual fact, the most accurate white balance setting here was two and a half thousand. This is what the color looked like in real life. At three and a half thousand, it looks, I think, slightly nicer because it's a bit richer. From four and a half thousand upwards, it gets progressively warmer. Again, when we get up to eight and a half thousand, it's uh, quite a ready, very much over golden color. So the sweet spot again, I would say down at two and a half, three and a half thousand Kelvin. On to yellow now. This looks yellow across all of these settings at two and a half thousand, maybe a little bit too pale. It's nice and rich at three and a half thousand. As we go up four and a half, five and a half, it looks progressively warmer. When we get to like 6,500, it's a nice sort of sunny yellow color. But this is a color that clearly uh, survives any kind of white balance setting. And onto green, another very, very common firework color. Along with red, I've not really seen any fireworks footage filmed by anyone where the green hasn't come out. And again, you can see why looking at the white balance settings here, it's green across all of the settings. A little dull maybe at two and a half thousand, but it looks nice and rich at three and a half. As we go up from there, although it does get a nice deep green, it also starts to turn a bit yellowy. Although it's slightly hard to pick up on these small thumbnails, but really from five and a half thousand upwards, it was starting to get a bit of a yellow cast. So the sweet spot for me here, again, two and a half to three and a half thousand. So what white balance setting should we be using? Well, I invite you to take a look at the results yourself. I've put them all together into a handy chart, which you can view for free on my website. So if you're not already watching this video as part of that white balance article, take a look at the video description for a link through to that. You can access the chart yourself, use it as a reference guide for your own filming. And also there's further information there about white balance in general and some more information for beginners including people filming on mobile phones, GoPros and the like. So it's well worth a look. Now I'm going to refer to this chart now while I give you my thoughts. And firstly, looking at this chart, I won't be using daylight as a white balance setting again. You just lose the blues completely and the purples. And it, was, it really does explain to me now why filming at the daylight setting, I've struggled to get blues to come out. It's not because they're not there. It's because they're leached out of the coloring by the time we get up to about 5,500. The real magic seems to be happening surprisingly right down at an extreme setting, all the way down at two and a half thousand. At that setting, the blues and purples look beautiful. The white is maybe a little too cold and the green is a little dull. But if you're looking at blues and purples and want to bring those out, that's the setting to use. If we jump up a thousand to three and a half thousand, the greens, the reds, the whites all look absolutely beautiful. However, we're starting to fade a bit on the blue. The purple still looks quite nice. So it's a toss up between these two settings for me based on these results, two and a half thousand K or three and a half thousand K. But it's hugely exciting to see these results all in a chart to show just how bad my previous setting that I've been using daylight was at picking up blues and purples. <clears throat> now you might be thinking, well, if two and a half or three and a half might work. What about 3000, which is slap bang in the middle? Well, for the purposes of this test, I wanted to pick a wide range of different Kelvin settings. So I had to narrow it down to eight or so. Otherwise I would have been there all night. But based on these results, I am going to head back into the garden in a future video and look at 3000 Kelvin across all of the same flares to see whether that actually is a great compromise between these two settings. You are of course free to pick any white balance setting if you're filming something more specific. So if you're filming a blue firework, definitely use two and a half thousand. But if you're filming a green firework, it's gonna be green all the way through, you can pick four and a half or five and a half. But the chart will give you a, a reference guide so you can pick off the best setting for you. Well, I hope you found this video and my chart useful. 
If you have, if I can ask a huge favour, that's hit that like button on the video and subscribe to me on YouTube as well. I really appreciate the support. I just want to finish by talking a bit about this product. Now, I got these flares specifically for the coloured part at the start, which is about 30, 40 seconds worth of a coloured flame. However, what you haven't seen yet on this video is at the end, when the flare finishes, they erupt into a really beautiful and very bright giant ice fountain effect. So if you take a look at this footage now, as you can see then after the flare, we've got a beautiful eruption of sparks quite high as well. With all the colours available, you've got blue and pink for gender reveal, just about every football club covered in these colours. They're of close proximity firework as well, because incredibly they're actually designed to be handheld. They're handheld flares. The bottom part is the handle. So the safety distance on these is basically zero. I think on the label it's, it states a distance of less than a metre. So these are ideal for very small spaces if you can't use category F2 or F3 fireworks. Several of these let off together, maybe in a fan, would look very spectacular or maybe you just want to stand around waving one in your hand. I thought these were really really good fireworks, so not just for a coloured flare but for that beautiful fountain at the end. Well that really is it from me, thank you so much for watching and I will catch you in the next video.